So I'd say we've got to move to a, a rights-based system. It's got to be enshrined on a fair share model that the best model I can think of is carbon rationing. Um, it has to be seen as inherently a political issue. It has to be seen about us, if you like, it's, it's the end of the meal and we have a huge carbon debt to the rest of the planet. It's time we kind of feed out what the bill is and actually start to pay our share back. I think that the payment is going to come on three key levels. It's going to be money. Uh, Oxfam suggests, I think, a figure for Australia of about $1.7 billion per year in adaptation funding that we should be giving to the global community. Um, I think the figure overall is about $50 billion per year US to deal with the impacts that is uh, build resilience in communities. Um, to the problems of global warming and to pick up the issue uh, Warwick mentioned before of the Carteret Islands. Adaptation to those people, as, as has been explained to me, would be um, boats with larger motors to allow them to get to the mainland of Bougainville safely in, in high weather events. It would be uh, corrugated iron roofing and guttering to allow them to collect rainwater, um, to allow them to rebuild their food security because their food security has been destroyed because um, of storm surge from rising sea levels, uh, destroying their, their root crops, the, ta the taro type crops that they used to rely on. Now they're relying on fish and coconut and they're getting malnutrition and it would be direct cash inputs so they could get rice more frequently. So adaptation, you know, it's it's hard to imagine what it might be, uh, but in the instance of, say, the card rates, it's, you know, it's simple as outboard motors, you know, rainwater tanks and rice. Um, so it needs to be culturally appropriate, it needs to be low tech and it needs to be sustainable. The other thing, of course, we need to do is come down to a fair share of producing greenhouse gases as soon as is humanly possible. We talk about mitigation, so we need to reduce our greenhouse gases. Politically, the first thing we need to do is stop further coal expansion. That's the number one issue that I can see. And then finally, uh, we need to remember that adaptation has to be in addition to our current overseas aid commitments and not instead of, because it's actually compensatory payment. It's payment for the damages that the generations before us and, and our generation are causing to the nations of Tuvalu, Bangladesh, Chad, Sudan and so on. Then finally, the other thing I think we need to do is accept uh, the reality of displacement due to global warming and begin to accept people. It's anyone's right to stay where they are and a resounding message that's coming from Pacific Island communities is we don't want to be environmental refugees. We want to be able to stay where we are. Australia has to pay its fair share of adaptation costs to help people adapt as best they are, uh, as best they can to stay where they are. The reality is though that people are already moving. Um, estimates are easily found of up to 50 million people displaced tonight uh, because of global warming already. The estimates go, uh, if we do nothing at this point, by the middle of this century up to 150 million people will be displaced. Um, the figures keep ratcheting up to about 400 million. Uh, the worst figure I've ever seen actually comes from the international uh, organisation organisation for migration, which is simply an international body that helps people physically move around the world. They say without radical action now on climate change, we could see up to one billion people are ultimately displaced from their homes by global warming. So we need early action now to reduce greenhouse gases on the one hand. We need funding uh, to help people adapt to the change conditions that are coming, to stay where they are, but we need to see the writing on the wall and accept that some people are already being displaced and many more will be displaced and, unless we take this action now and we need to create an intake program for climate refugees. That needs to be in addition to um, the, the asylum seekers we, we currently accept for humanitarian reasons. So to finish, um, we live in a, an interesting time. If anyone's been reading the paper, um, you'll see there's the beginning of a conversation or an argument around we should cut back on migration in order to look after um, our green, in order to meet our greenhouse gas reduction targets. I strongly oppose that approach uh, to uh, our our response to climate change. But this, as an issue, is going to become a really hot topic in coming years. It is already in the United States, it is already in Western Europe, and there are forces that can only be described as being quite racist and quite xenophobic who will come in behind a green agenda and argue on the need to limit migration for these and other environmental reasons. There are, of course, many people who are concerned about ecological impact who argue a population stabilisation approach, but I think we need to be willing to step up to the plate on this. The environment movement doesn't engage on this issue and we need to start to. So to finish, 
it's essentially a human rights issue, climate change. Um, it essentially requires, therefore, a political response, not a market-based response, not a technological response, not a behavioural change response, although all of those have to be part of it. But unless we have a political framework that frames each of those, we will go down paths that really aren't sustainable and aren't just for the majority of people on the planet. And in the short term, we need to, grow, as fast as is humanly possible, reduce our greenhouse gas emissions to an equitable fair share level. We need to pay a fair share of adaptation. That needs to go directly to impacted communities. And we need to create an intake program for climate refugees. That's something we could do with the stroke of a pen tomorrow. So we need to apply pressure to the ALP. They're getting there, but they need quite a bit more of a push to get them over uh, the lip. I hope I didn't go on for too long, and thanks. Thank you.